Hey everyone, Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we are working on page eight. Page eight, and it's gonna be the same as page one. So um, in this case, we're gonna um, put some papers down, then add some interactive components. So we're gonna go back and forth a little bit, which is not always the case. So take your, the first thing we're gonna do is take our page eight, our pocket page, and we're gonna come in and put a tick mark at the half inch on the top and bottom, because <clears throat> that's where our flap is gonna get installed. <clears throat> I'm gonna use my grid to do that. You can use a ruler, whatever you're comfortable with. And I wanna take a moment to say thanks to all our new uh, subscribers over on the channel. We're always happy to have uh, new subscribers and um, that just means some of the old subscribers are doing uh, are helping us by liking, sharing, and um, you know, passing on our name, which we really appreciate. <clears throat> All right, there we go. And I, I forgot to mention this is let it be. So there's our half inch mark. That is where um, these two flaps are going to get installed. So we're going to inset a half inch. But before we do that, we're going to put a decorative strip down. Now each one of these strips is. Um, three quarters of an inch, really only a half inch of that is going to be exposed. The rest is going to be under uh, the flap. And I have gone a back and forth on this uh, multiple times trying to decide which side of this I want. I really like this, but I'm going to lay it out for you guys and we're going to make that decision together. So this is the bottom pocket. And then we've got a flap up here Then we've got a smaller flap. And then we've got a smaller pocket that goes on top of this pocket. So this is pretty much what it's gonna look like. And then I'm gonna put a, a green half inch strip on the bottom. So that is basically option one. And then option two is to have this, and that's what we're gonna do. And, and not looking at it now, I'm convinced that's the right answer. Okay, I'm gonna set all this aside. We're gonna put our first two strips in. I've already inked them, so this will go quickly. Um, <clears throat> if you didn't catch it in the first video or on page one, I'm using Powder Puff Mahogany for ink on the edges. It's a beautiful day here in San Diego. I just got back from a nice walk with my dog Nala. Um, so hopefully she's not going to be in here crying <laughs> anytime soon. You guys, I know you've all heard, had a fair share of listening to her cry and whine. I'm just looking, it can't tell the orientation on the back side. So it, this looks pretty generic. So let me see, where do I want my flowers? I've got green, I'm gonna do it this way, yeah. Put most of the, and the reason I'm doing the green toward the bottom is because the top flap has green in it. So I just wanna distribute the color. So also I wanted to share with you um, kind of what I did to come up with the designer papers here. And I'm trying to add more of that content. So here is page one. So. I used every single color in the collection in page one. So I'm gonna do the same thing in page two. So what I did is um, I pulled in page one. <clears throat> some of you are gonna like this, some of you are gonna just wish I'd get on with decorating the pages. And I wrote down, and I can't find where I wrote it. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, I wrote down each of the colors, green, red, black, and yellow. Those are the colors in the collection. So, <clears throat> What I did is I did an equivalent. So I said for every green slot on page one, I'm gonna make it yellow on page eight. And every time I used red, I'm gonna replace it with black on page eight. And every time I use black, I'm gonna replace it with red. And every time I used yellow, I'm gonna replace it with green. And so that's going to give me kind of different color patterns, but uh, basically the same kind of balance. So that's just a quick and easy cheat to um, distribute the colors. Um, and honestly, I think I do that intuitively. And today was the first time I was actually thinking about the process and trying to wrap my head around how I would explain that to somebody. I don't think I've ever actually written it down. Um, and so that's my starting point. 
So then I distribute my colors like that as I'm trimming them. And then I adjust it as I go if I'm not happy with how it's flowing together. But it's kind of the starting point. And then before I start cutting anything, I start just sort of layering it in uncut patterns to see how it's coming together and if I like it. So there you go. There's another tip on design for um, your use. Okay, now we're ready to install our first interactive component, which are these two flaps. These are four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight. Now those two tick marks that we put on, or the tick marks that we put on top and bottom are at the half inch and that's where we're going to install it. Now I wrote my tick marks very close to the edge here. So they're actually extending past the designer paper so I can still see them. And I'm gonna use that as the guide to install my flaps. Oh, very good. Okay, do the same thing over here. <clears throat> Oops. There we go, everything looks good. I'm just checking my edges to make sure nothing's hanging off. There's a little bit hanging off, but I'm not worried about it because by the time we add more paper to the inside and out, it's going to um, stand away from it anyway. Okay, we'll burnish those into place just with my fingers. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add a pocket. What did I do with all my papers? Here they are. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the larger of the two pockets, and then this pocket is five by five. Five by five, you're going to score a half inch on three of the four sides to make a pocket, and it's just going to go flush with the bottom of the page, just like so. Pretty simple. And we're going to do one on each side. If I can get my pick tool under the tape, my goodness, I did not want to grab. There we go. That was weird. Okay. Now, if your pocket doesn't fit exactly on your flap, uh, this, is, this is a tough call. Normally, I would say push any excess away from the edge of your flap. However, in this case, if you do that, you're gonna interfere with the flap opening and closing. So if it's slightly over, I would say push it toward the edge that opens and not toward the score line. Otherwise, your flap won't open and close the way you want it to. But ideally, it's perfect. So how do I get it to fit perfectly? Um, one of the things that I learned, and it's so obvious once you think about it, is, you know, when you um, trim your paper down, say, for example, I trim this to four and a half by eight, <clears throat> and then I score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. What happens is the score itself takes up more than a half inch. It takes up a half inch plus some fraction just to cover the score. So what I started doing is... Cut it, rough cutting it to like say four and five eighths, score a half inch, fold it over, burnish it, put it back in the trimmer and trim it exactly at four and a half. And then you, you know that this is four and a half. It's not almost four and a half because of the score line. So typically that's what I do. Now in the case of the pocket where you're doing three sides to get it as close as possible, I put it in my trimmer and I score a half inch and then I fold it under, and then I come lay it in the, the scoreboard again and score it in the scoreboard. Then I trim it a half inch. This, hopefully that makes sense because you're taking up a little bit of, of the paper on each side. So score it, put it in the um, trimmer, 
after you fold it under. I mean, put it in the scoreboard after you fold it over and then score the back side. And of course you could do it this way, whichever, whatever makes sense. I lay it in this way, score half inch, fold it under, push it over that half inch. And then I know I need to um, come in to, let's see, this was, I scored at four, at half inch and four and a half. But um, anyways, give that a shot and see how you do. I find that it's been pretty successful and my um, pockets that are meant to be the same width as the flap turn out, turn out pretty darn close. <clears throat> now the other way to do this, which is not my preference, is to just trim your pocket to fit exactly with no score lines and then glue the edges of your pocket in. So do three edges of glue. I don't like doing it that way because it means it's taking up part of the width of the pocket with glue. This way, um, because you've got these flanges, you have the whole width of the pocket. So there, there you go. There's another tip. I'm gonna get a contrast sheet just so I can see the edge here. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Okay, now we're ready to uh, add our flaps. So we have two flaps. <clears throat> Let's go over here. Okay. Sorry, shuffling. So the first flap is going to get installed. It's the same width as as the um, the large flap and it's going to come top down and this is four and a half by four so it's four and a half inches across by four you're going to score a half inch and then i went ahead and used my corner chomper to make a decorative corner you can round it whatever you have handy you can also just leave it square okay Okay, four and a half by four, one on the left, one on the right. <clears throat> Oops, I'm actually in my score just a little bit. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit, but I'm gonna do it offline after we add a couple more components. So the, and the way I'm gonna clean it up is I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife to trim off what's going right here into the hinge area carefully. Okay, so then the top flap, the smaller of the two um, horizontal flaps is three and a half by four, three and a half by four, and that's not right. It should be three and a half by four and a quarter. So sorry, that, that doesn't belong here. I had it right, I just said some extra flap in here. Three and a half by four and a quarter. On the four and a quarter inch side, you're gonna score a half inch. And then what this does is it leaves a nice beautiful um, frame around your smaller flap. So you'll have this nice frame around it with a larger flap. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center it on this flap. So I'm gonna come in two inches, I'm gonna put a tick mark, and then over here, I'm gonna come in, I think it's one and something. Where's my Tim Holtz ruler? Here it is. It's clear, so I lose track of it. So I'm gonna use my Tim Holtz ruler, find my center point. <clears throat> here, and then also find my center here, which happens to be, in this case, two inches in. If you don't have a Tim Holtz ruler, just take the width and divide it by two, and that's your, you're just gonna come in from one of the edges to your halfway point. This is one and three quarters. And that's not, what did I do with the second one? Here it is. Buried it. Okay. 
and one and three quarters. Now, in the case of these two flaps, I also did decorative corners. <coughs> I'm going to share with you um, after I get this in how we're going to fix my flap. And there's one of two ways. One, I can trim it. It doesn't look centered. Ooh, I hate it when that happens. But it is. It's just the lighting, I guess. It looks like it's a little too far over this way. Oh, hold up. Well, I guess I'm going to believe my ruler because it says it's straight. So I'm going to leave it as it is. <clears throat> I mean, not straight, centered. Okay, let's double check. Did I get it at two? Yes, I did. And did I get this at one and three quarters? Yep, so I'm just lining up those tick marks and... Uh, Everything looks good. Okay, now where, okay, here's the side. I'm gonna bring it up to you so you can see it. It's very, it's just that tiny little bit that's past uh, the edge of the flap. So I'm gonna look on both sides and it looks like the other side is right. So I'm just gonna take an X-Acto knife and trim that very carefully. Well, first of all, I'm going to open it and see if it's going to cause a problem. If it doesn't cause a problem, I don't really care. But can you hear that? That's where it's getting hung up. So I do need to trim it. So I'm going to use my, my metal ruler, and I don't need to trim anything down here. There's no interference. It's just this tiny sliver. And it's possible that this particular flap did not get cut straight. It's possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to mark it. I'm sorry, you're looking at the top of my head. I'm going to mark where it's over <clears throat> and then I'm going to start by laying my, my uh, <clears throat> metal ruler down and trimming carefully so I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to go all the way through to my designer paper. Let's see. Trim it one more time. Not the best uh, blade. It shakes around, so it's hard to be precise. I need a pair of tweezers. Pure tweezers. To get that a little bit off. Okay, now I want to see if it's going to open and close. It's still catching. So the other thing is we are going to have an insert. So I'm going to put something in here right now. Because you're, when you open it, oh, there's no pocket. When you open and close it, there will be something holding your flap down. Okay. Let can see. It was folding and not trimming. Okay, so I'm going to go over that one more time. On this side. And there you could see it cutting away. <clears throat> now we're gonna straighten that up a little bit, we should be done. <clears throat> 
because it's at different elevations, it was bending the paper instead of cutting it. So you do need to be patient. That should do it. But we shall see. I think it's just about right. I am going to leave it as is because it is definitely out of the hinge area. Okay. Clean that up a little bit. Yeah. So when you hold your flaps down and you open and close, you don't want to hear that scratching noise. And keep in mind that once we get this completely done, there will be something holding these flaps in place. They're not, you're not going to close it like so. Okay, that's done. Sorry about that. That took a little bit of time. Okay, this is the pattern solid that I chose for the top flap. And I'm going to use a contrast sheet so I can see around all the edges. <clears throat> okay, I shuffled everything around so many times. I gotta find my papers again. This is gonna go on the bottom left and right. Here they all are. Oh my gosh, I had a panic attack that I didn't hit the record, sorry. <laughs> Again, everything is already inked using uh, mahogany from Powder Puff, which we have in stock. It's my favorite go-to. Okay, so the next is the green. I'm gonna do the same thing. Make sure that's looking good. Yep, and I call that dry fitting, just checking your measurements one more time before you put any adhesive on it, whether it's tape or glue. It's your last chance to trim and verify that it fits um, before you start to make a mess of things, <laughs> which I have been known to lift things if I'm not happy with it. Um, most of the time you can, if you're quick about it, you can lift it and then replace it with something else. Lovely. Um, patterns and solids. So both the top small flap and this flap are um, from the patterns and solids pack. So there we are. So for the large pocket, I've chosen this pattern. It doesn't look like the right piece because it doesn't fit. And it's going to go here. But before I add this, we are going to do a strip of green. <clears throat> so I have this option or I have this option. And I think I'm going to go with the solid because I'm using the pattern here and I wanted some variation. So the other option before I settle on that, the other option would be to use um, this pattern, um, which you still don't see very much of it. So I think I'm gonna stick with this since it's already trimmed out. Um, and either one, the pattern is so large, you can't really appreciate it. Oh, you know what? I have one more pattern I just remembered. The polka dots. I could do a polka dot here. Let's see how that looks with this pattern. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim a half inch off and we're gonna take a look at it. Okay, and then I think this is four and three eighths. I 
I didn't actually mark it. I got, I guess I did. It's very hard to see though. All right. It has to be. Okay, let's see. So this, oh, I did that wrong. I did four and five eighths. So we have this option. This option or this option. I like the polka dots. That's what we're going to do. Let's trim it to fit. Then I'll get a second one and we'll lay this in. Then we're going to trim the yellow to fit. And if you're new to the channel, this is what I refer to as color blocking. And you don't have to do it. I mean, you could have just used a full panel of this. I like it. I think it adds a lot of interest and complexity to the album without the complexity being in the interactive components necessarily. And I like to leave a strip of black between the color block, but you can also butt them up together. Beautiful. Okay, now that we have that in, we can look at the edge of the pocket here and I can decide how much I need to trim off of this. So I want to have a black border on the top and I want a black border between the green and yellow. So it looks like I need to trim it right there. I'm uh, using a 16th inch border. around each one of the pieces. Whoops, I'm like, what? It doesn't fit. <laughs> Let's turn sideways. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna ink it and lay it down. So we're gonna repeat that for the, the second panel. So when I'm color blocking, I have to make a decision about which pattern I'm going to put down first. And the way I make that decision is the smallest piece goes in first. And, um, and then I'll trim the larger one to fit. And it's just easier. So if I put the yellow in and I needed to do some adjustments, trying to trim a half inch uh, piece of paper in your trimmer is, is a real challenge. Not so much with a four inch piece, right? So that's how I make that decision. I try not to do anything less than a half inch because once you add adhesive to it, 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 it can warp very easily and become curved when you go to lay it down. So a half inch is about as small as I'll go. Okay, now we need another polka dot. Let me see if I, did I wind up with a enough to go on this pocket. Nope, it's too short. Uh, by the way, this polka dot is from the 8x8. Um, there's also polka dot in the 12x12, but I think it's too big. Or the polka dots are too far spaced. So it doesn't look as good. Ideally, though, I would have cut this all from one strip so that they would match exactly because they don't. I just made that too short. So this time I'm just going to lay it in and mark it because I want that to look very consistent coming across. So I'm going to mark it and then we'll trim it based on that. How'd I do? Not perfect, but pretty darn good. I'm going to go with it. <clears throat> Mm 
Okay. Oops. Okay. So um, we are going to have inserts in this, and this is one of the inserts. It's the back of an ephemera card. And I'll tell you what that measurement is in just a minute. I was going to use it to close it, but I haven't got the top pocket on here yet. So I'll, I'll do that, and then these will stop flopping around. Okay, now I'm ready to add this, and it looks like I just need to trim a little bit off this one and see if it's the right width. Nope, it's not. <clears throat> okay, that should be the right width. Nope, it can come off even a little more. Now we need to do the height. Oh, you know what? It was the right width. Um, I had it turned the wrong way. There is, There are words on here, so make sure your orientation is correct. Did I get that right? Yeah. Sorry about that. Now, now we can mark the height. Beautiful. We'll ink it, lay it down. This is from the eight by eight. I just noticed I've got a pencil mark here. I don't want it to show once I get this down. So I need to find an erase. Okay. Now there's still one more um, element that's going to go on top of this, and it is a four and a half by four, four and a half by four pocket. Now this is the pocket that's going to hold this insert. So I'm going to come up about a quarter of an inch, but what's really important is that the, the larger of the two flaps is clear of the pocket so that we can slip the insert in to hold everything in place. So that's what really matters. Um, I like the idea of this coming down halfway through the green. So I am also going to go ahead and um, decorate the pockets and then lay it down because then I can, I've can i got something to look at. So this is also from, no, this is from the 8x8. i got to think about that. Is this from the 8x8? No, it's not. It's from Patterns and Solids. So there's a solid on the back. It's Patterns and Solids. So that means it's from the 12 by 12 Pattern Solid pack. Again, four and a half by four. You're going to score a half inch on three of the four sides. <clears throat> If you're new to the channel, if you if you go down to the description and click show more, you will find um, first the material list, and that'll be followed by 
the cut list. And the cut list is for all the black cardstock interactive components, um, not for the designer paper. I leave that up to you because not everybody likes a 16th inch border, in which case the cut list will, the cut would be, would vary. So I do a 16th inch border and the way I come up with that is I take the size of my flap or whatever I'm trying to cover and I subtract an eighth of an inch in height and width. Then I center the designer paper and that gives me a 16th inch border all the way around. But some people like an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch. It's, it's really up to you. It's definitely a preference. Okay, these are on. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at this. And yeah, I think I am gonna go about halfway through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my ruler to draw a line so that both pockets, bottom, so the bottom of both pockets line up. And I'm gonna do it at a quarter inch. And I can't see very well, so I'm going to go on this side. It's easier. Those dots really throw my eyeballs for a loop. So I'm going to do a quarter inch up from the color, not from the edge of the flap. So I'm going a quarter inch up on the uh, green part. So I'm coming up from the edge of the green, not from the edge of the flap. Okay, now we're ready to go. I had this problem earlier. I don't know why the, the backing on the tape doesn't want to release. Because I burnished everything, so it should come up pretty easy. All right, so that should be a straight line. This should be relatively easy. I'm centering it. I'm not going, I'm eyeballing it. I'm not going to mark it. But if you're uncomfortable with that, put a tick mark on the middle of your pocket and a mark on the middle of where you're trying to place it, and you'll be good to go. I am just going to eyeball it. Okay, and then here's our insert. So we're going to have an insert here. See, it does not look lovely. I'm happy with all the patterns. An insert here, and then there's also a pocket here. So there'll be an insert that's a little bit wider. So let me tell you what those are. The wider insert is three and three quarter by seven and a half, three and three quarter by seven and a half, and the narrow, the, the one that's going to go on top and hold all your flaps together, is... Um, Ugh, it's I start with three and one eighth and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna select your ephemera card and then you're gonna trim down to make this fit so if you want a large border around, well can you go larger yeah you can go larger so it really depends on how much border you want around your ephemera I'm sticking with my 16th inch border as I have throughout the rest of the album. So I started with three and one eighths, and then when I laid my um, ephemera card in, I marked it and trimmed a little bit more. So it might be closer to three and a sixteenth, um, but it just depends on the ephemera card that you selected or whatever you're putting here. Okay, so that's that. This is gonna hold everything shut for me and it's getting stuck on the bottom, there it goes. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I have to, select another ephemera card to go on this side. Um, I think this is the back of that. No, it's not. So I haven't figured out what I'm going to do there yet. So the last thing we're going to do until for now, and I'm going to take a break, is add that last pocket as soon as I figure out where I laid it. Here it is. It has designer paper on it. I was looking for solid paper, um, solid black. Okay, I'm going to use that reference line. And then I'm going to eyeball it left to right, but you can see it's about a quarter inch border, which is why I did a quarter inch down here. It just makes it look a, like a, a balanced frame. Thank you. 
Okay, there we go. And then this one, it's not decorated yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the pocket. Okay, so we still have much to do, right? We have to do the B side of the flaps. We have to line our pocket, cover our um, insert, and then we still have the inside yet to go. So I'm gonna go line up all those papers and I'll be back and we'll finish up page eight.